No one's gonna believe that this happened. I don't care. I'm gonna tell you anyway. I am in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which at least for today shall be re-nicknamed Bra Sweat Ridge, Tennessee, because it is a million degrees out here. And for this video, I'm not taking off my sunglasses because I'm quite sure that my mascara is dripping down my face with my sweat. And I think I give the internet enough to harass me about on a normal day. Okay, in the last video, we were at the beautiful and overpriced Biltmore Estate, and I was telling you all about how that was built. And as I was poking around up there and like not minding my business everywhere else in Tennessee, I heard that there was another marvel of construction, a secret city. Doesn't that sound just right up my alley? Uh, so I, you know, get in the truck, get in Bob, and drive another two hours in the other direction. And I've not done much homework, admittedly, uh, and not much planning because Tennessee, for the most part, has been reopened, reopened, oh, secret city, secret city, uh, for quite a while. And so I just assumed that, you know, I don't know, everything in the secret city would be open. Nope, nope, nope. I couldn't find a single human up in this piece when I got here. I finally find someone with a heartbeat and I said, what in the world? <laughs> Didn't y'all know I was coming? Don't you watch? And she said, well, uh, you know, most of Tennessee is open, but, uh, you know, even though we are a national park, I said, oh, where's the national park? Oh, the whole city is a national park. Huh? Yeah, the whole city of Oak Ridge, Tennessee is a national park. Well, that's odd. She said, yeah, it's all, it's all shut down. I was like, okay, well, well, when is everything gonna reopen? I mean, I could wait a half an hour. She said, well, because we're pretty much all government buildings here, uh, likely not for another year. What? Why is everything government owned? And she said, well, you know, the nuclear uh, production factory, what? Nuclear what? Oh, I said, girlfriend, just give me that little booklet. I will do the rest on my own. So absolutely nothing is open. None of the tours are open. There are no people here. It doesn't matter. We're gonna figure it out. I have a feeling there's a great story here. This, boys and girls, is a story about how Casey almost spent a night in a federal slammer. Also included, bombs and top secret missions. A story that starts in 1900, when a simple farmer named John Hendricks had a vision about Bear Creek Valley, the future Oak Ridge. According to local legend, John said of his dream that big engines will dig ditches and thousands of people will be running to and fro. They will be building things and there will be great noise and confusion and the earth will shake. He was eerily accurate. It's the 1940s. Pinup girls hang on walls, and the sound of swing dance provides an overture to the approaching crescendo of war. A year later, the U.S. was yanked into World War II after a surprise attack at Pearl Harbor, and President Roosevelt authorized the creation of a top-secret nationwide project with a singular mission beat Hitler to the atomic weapon. Its code name, the Manhattan Project, was a nod to its initial top secret headquarters, a skyscraper in the boroughs that was hidden in plain sight. Three remote locations were identified to build the bombs, New Mexico, Washington, and a little farming town in Tennessee. And that's exactly where we are. Unfortunately, practically all of the buildings that tell the story of this time are gone. And, as I said, all the tours to get inside what's left are closed. So we're going to have to rely on historical photos, but I promise you, the history of Oak Ridge is so fascinating, you will not miss the HD footage. Producing the uranium needed to weaponize nuclear energy required separating uranium-235 from uranium-238. Minor detail, the process took 3,000 times to get the result and needed a 40-acre plant, at least. So large that workers needed bicycles to get around. Oak Ridge was perfect. It had electricity, water, rail service, and nearby labor. The 1,000 families who farmed this land were told to either sell or get out. 
At the height of World War II, 110,000 construction workers filtered in and in less than three years built two enormous uranium-235 production plants called Y-12 and K-12, along with an entire town to house, school, feed and employ its future workforce. To connect all of it, little tiny Oak Ridge, Tennessee was fashioned with the nation's ninth largest bus system. Under complete silence and with zero fanfare, the first Manhattan Project building opened in Oak Ridge in November of 1943. But who could they convince to move here to build bombs? In that era, Americans were devoted to their country and with a driving sense of patriotism in the air, it was quite easy to get their full participation without having to answer many questions. As it turned out, they could get just about anybody, particularly women. The work at Y-12 was top priority. That facility separated the uranium, a process long believed to be only left in the hands of PhD-level physicists to run the complex machines. Problem, we were at a shortage of men, reference battlefields. And then someone realized they could train the women to do it. And the women outperformed the scientists. Meet the Calutron girls. Young women, many right out of high school, at the helm of the control panels inside the Y-12 uranium enrichment plant. They guided the electromagnetic process to separate uranium isotopes, critical for building atomic bombs. Women came to Oak Ridge in droves. Their husbands and boyfriends were fighting overseas. In this new town, they were promised good pay, free health care and cheap housing in some of the homes called alphabet homes that still stand today. Perks that caused deep resentment in nearby cities like Knoxville. The rest of the country was living in a time of austerity, while these out-of-towners flooded in with unlimited rations and wallets full of cash. They were scorned and ostracized and easily identifiable. The hurried construction had left a thick layer of mud across Oak Ridge. Anyone showing up in Knoxville with muddy shoes was labeled as one of those. By 1945, 75,000 people called the Secret City home. Secret City, right. Let's tackle that. Of all those new hires, none of them knew exactly what they were working on. They had no idea they were building a nuclear bomb. I know that sounds impossible, but rewind back to an era before social media, mainstream media, and email. Their day jobs were specific tasks at specific locations. If you made a widget, you weren't sure where that widget went after. And if the government is paying for all your needs, I mean, <laughs> why ask any questions, right? There were spies planted throughout town to ensure that water cooler gossip was hushed, but by and large, I'm just not sure anyone cared. All they knew was that they were helping to end the war, and that was all that mattered. In 1945, Germany surrendered and President Truman gave a final ultimatum to the Japanese to stop the war. Hiroshima was the primary target. It was the right size and there were no American prisoners of war there. The Enola Gay bomber dropped the untested little boy bomb, and in almost an instant, Hiroshima was destroyed. The first atomic bomb did not bring peace. The second did. Three days later, the Fat Man bomb was dropped over Nagasaki. 100,000 people were killed in the bombings and two cities were leveled. The Japanese surrendered. When news reached Oak Ridge, they were thrilled. Their urgent work had brought peace. More importantly, there was hope that their men would be coming home. In 1947, the residents of Oak Ridge gathered in a gymnasium to hear plans for turning their wartime town into a permanent community, transferring ownership from military to civilian. A town council was formed and the buildings were torn down. In need of a stiff drink, the residents voted to immediately legalize whiskey. Whiskey is exactly what I needed after failing to find any existing buildings and knowing the only tour available 
was canceled for a year because of COVID, I took myself on my own self-directed adventure. And that's where I met Rambo after crossing a federal security line and winning the door prize of losing all my rights. Oh, that was scary. I am sweating like a whore in church and it is not because of the heat. Are these reality shows who need to come up with their own plot lines to make things dramatic? I don't need that help. I don't need that help. Somebody needs to follow me around with a camera. I just create my own problems. No one's going to believe that this happened. I don't care. I'm going to tell you anyway. And I can't, I don't have much video to show you of the shit show that I just created because, <laughs> well, you, because you understand why. I am on the phone and I'm trying to like do two, you know, here's the thing. Where's the, they give you this like self-guided tour thing and everything is closed and everything else is poorly labeled. So I am left to my own devices, which means some degree of trespassing is going to happen. I just assume that all of these nuclear buildings are shut down and that I'd be like walking around ruins or I don't know. I don't know. They're actually still operating. <laughs> There's some really heavy duty nuclear facilities here. Anything nuclear is federal, is national security. So walking around with this honking thing, taking pictures and videos, uh, you got to be really careful. I have years of experience, years of experience in Wilmington because we have the GE nuclear plant and we have the nuclear power plant that if you go anywhere near them with a camera to try to get video, they, you will just suddenly find yourself surrounded by big beefy men with Uzis and they will, they will, they will help you out as fast as they can. And they will either confiscate the camera or make you delete the footage. Something, national security, blah, 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 blah. So I know how this goes. So I am trying, so I can put this story together to get some footage of what is actually here and then I'm just gonna mix it with historical footage <laughs> so I could edit this and and I can't really get out of the truck to do that because if the cameras, and I know they have cameras all over these things, I've actually toured our nuclear power plant. It's incredible. But if they see this, like, I'm going to have a problem. So I'm trying to, like, paparazzi it out of the car. And I'm seeing the signs that are like, you know, no trespass. I'm like, oh, this is going to, I can't stay long. I cannot stay long. I don't mind being thrown in jail at home where I know everybody. I'm not trying to go to the Oak Ridge uh, Penitentiary. So I'm not paying attention. I'm trying to get the footage. I'm on the phone and I make a left hand and innocuous, innocent left hand turn to try to get a different angle of this active nuclear site that is not a ruin, that is clearly uh, employing many people to do whatever wizardry they do in there. And I see the thing that should make anyone who has a clue should make your butthole just like, <laughs> and it is, the military style overpass and you will see these at any military base where you go in and uh, get your car inspected or they look for your badge or anything like that and I see that and I see no other option and in my brain I said it's okay you're a lost tourist you're just gonna you're just gonna smile and say I'm so sorry and just just whip around just make a nice little u-turn oh no 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 not with anything new clear, not in anything that involves me. There's no whipping it around. So I pull up there and this big, yummy, he's probably like 24 years old, uh, man in all camo military, he comes out and I, you know, I get all the charm that I have. And I said, hi, I'm, I'm trying to do this self-guided tour. I don't know what voice that is. Uh, I'm a little lost and I was trying to get to here. Um, so I just, I just need to, I just need to turn around. And he said, okay, I'll need your ID. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> why do you need my ID? I just need to turn around. If you could just help me turn around. Nope. Nope. He needs the ID. He takes it. Now, now I'm already nervous because if he looks, I don't know what comes up when they look at your ID in a federal institution. Uh, but if he sees anything media or reporter, like I instantly have way more problems than I did 10 feet behind me. Plus, 
in this vehicle. So I have all these cameras. I've been getting footage of no trespassing signs and places where tourists shouldn't go. Not my fault that you have a shit tour guide. And so I have that. And I also have not one, but a couple weapons in here for my personal safety. Uh, you can, if you get pulled over on the side of the road and you tell the officer, hey man, or woman, um, I have whatever you have in here. <laughs> just letting you know, like, they'll be cool. You just need to let them know that it's in there so that there are no surprises because that's when things go really wrong. If you are in a federal national security nuclear facility, having any kind of weapon above eyeliner is, you are going to have, <laughs> it's not your day. That's how that's going to go. So I have the camera, I have the media background, and I have weapons in here. And I'm like, I mean, my heart is going a million miles down. He takes it, you know, he takes the license and he said, okay, just pull over there. I'm just trying to whip around, pull over there. An officer will meet you over there. I'm like, oh my God, I cannot go to jail in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Oh, <gasps> Mr. Officer, again, just yummy, big, beefy thing, comes over, nicest guy. And, you know, I told, he said that tourists do this routinely, probably not tourists who are in media uh, and have weapons. <laughs> and so, but I have to go through, like, a whole process to make sure that I check out federally to be released. And this takes a solid 20 minutes. Luckily, he was such a sweetheart. We talked about uh, my applying to the FBI and DEA and law enforcement. So they, I don't know what they searched through, but I checked out for that. And he grabs his camera. And I'm trying to like stealth take photos of what's going on so that I can tell you all. But I also know that if they see cameras, I'm now inside the facility. Like I am, I'm not getting the phone back. <laughs> So he, he takes pictures of the truck and he takes, you know, all around to document that I was there. And then he goes, okay, I'm gonna take, have to take your profile. And I'm like, oh, what kind of face should I make? So I'm like, <laughs> and he goes, okay, smile and say, watch list. And my face probably went, <laughs> and I was like, are you serious? And he was like, oh no, we do that to make people laugh. I'm like, this is not funny, man. I know comedy and that's not funny. At the very end, uh, you know, he's helping me like figure out where I need to go. And he said, oh, well, we have to get the dog out. And I'm like, why? There's no dope in this car. Why do we? And then my brain does the automatic thing that I do when I see a canine or a cow. They bring out the dog and I go, oh, the Snugglesaurus. And I go to get my phone to like take a picture of the dog because I love the canine so much. And he's like, dude, <laughs> what are you doing? What you, you put that away. <laughs> So the canine goes around the truck, they bring the canine away, and then he has to stop all of tra traffic. I just bit my lip. I'm just overworked. He has to stop all of traffic with his patrol car at the nuclear facility to let me get out because I can't go any further. And I'm like, oh my God. I just wanted to get some history on your little town. Um, they, they were great. They could tell that I was like freaked out and very apologetic. And, uh, he said, well, is there anywhere else you want to go on your tour? And I said, you know what, man, I think I just got the whole experience. <laughs> I met y'all. Y'all are great. Oak, Oak Ridge PD and our federal law enforcement. Just, just lovely. <laughs> um, but I, I would really like to get going. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Um, let's just try to find something else. And then, uh, I'm going to have to go change my underwear because I think I peed my pants the second that I saw that underpass and realized that I was going under it and subsequently um, causing some kind of national homeland security incident all by myself without even trying. Don't try this at home, kids. Leave my kind of tourism to the pros or at least to those who have bail money. In history class, we're taught that kaboom went the bomb, up went the white flag of surrender, and the story ends there. Yay! No! The Manhattan Project and Oak Ridge have a legacy that endures today. You can visit the 8,000 pound bronze friendship bell here, which commemorates the past. Created under a partnership with Japan, it's the equivalent of a pinky swear between the two a resolution to maintain peace.
I feel like I shouldn't ring the bell because it's peaceful, but it is here and it doesn't say no touch. So we'll just give it a little tappy tappy. Little tappy tappy. Okay, that's not enough tappy tappy. Still not enough tappy tappy. Almost. For the rest of the world, the fission technology that came out of these projects has since been the foundation for the development of nuclear reactors, generators, MRIs, cancer radiation, and so much more. The year 2020 marks 75 years without a World War III. And while right now the United States may feel like it's fully at war with itself, that is a monumental success on a global scale. It seems implausible today to think that the government could orchestrate the construction of secret cities and build nuclear bombs without anyone knowing. We have to remember that the unshakable sentiment at the time was do anything to end the war. Bring back our sons, husbands, and brothers as soon as possible and at any cost or sacrifice. This is not how Americans think today. I mean, my God, we still routinely deploy to missions around the world and their names, their service, and far too often their deaths never make even a small mention in the local press. There's a legitimate risk of standing in the present and trying to look back and interpret the past. Our world moves so fast. We lack sparse comprehension or context of bygone eras. Travel will teach you how to step out of your today and try to see places and the people within them as they were. That said, we only learn from the past by keeping these stories alive without glossing over all the jagged edges of humanity. Keep your ears and your mind open while out on the road and even at home. Seek out all the secrets and at least in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, don't make any wrong turns.